Okay, so welcome to this next video in the playlist on synaptic mechanisms. In this video, we're going to look at the function of synaptotagmin. So we're going to basically summarize all of the previous videos that I have made on the function of synaptotagmin and put it all together into a cohesive model. Okay, right, so it will not have been necessary for you to have watched the previous videos. I'm going to make this one stand alone, basically. If you want to uh, find out, however, about some more in-depth assays that were done to decide upon all of this stuff, uh, then I would uh, suggest watching the other videos on the function of synaptotagmin. Right, so in this video, I want this video basically to put the whole story together. So I want uh, to start with the docking of the vesicles to the plasma membrane, then talk about um, that how calcium goes up, uh, and then talk about um, how um, that's going to cause changes in synaptotagmin, where synaptotagmin will now interact with lipids in the membrane of the um, in the presynaptic membrane, cause it to invaginate in, that leads to fusion, and then we've released our neurotransmitter. Then what I want to talk about is the Rothman assay again, and don't worry, I will remind you of what the Rothman assay is, and I want you to, to tell you what went wrong in that assay, why in the Rothman assay, snare proteins alone were enough to fuse the two vesicles together, and what he did wrong, basically. And then we'll look at what happens if you do the Rothman assay right. Okay, so, a big, a lot to take on then. Alright, so we'll begin with the story then. So, let's say uh, this is an axon terminal here. Okay, so it's going to release neurotransmitter onto its postsynaptic neuron when an action potential arrives at this axon terminal. So, in order to do that, what the axon terminal has is it has synaptic vesicles stored right up against the membrane that faces the postsynaptic cell. So here is the postsynaptic cell, potentially a dendritic spine of the next cell along. Okay, so this is the um, postsynaptic cell here, postsynaptic cell. Right, so... Um, in order that uh, the release of neurotransmitter from the presynaptic cell uh, can be very, very fast upon an action potential arriving, what you have is these uh, synaptic vesicles here. And to show that they're synaptic vesicles, what I'll do is I'll put little dots in them to denote that they have neurotransmitter in. You have these synaptic vesicles that are docked or linked uh, up at the, um, at the presynaptic membrane here. Okay, and this store of vesicles right against the plasma membrane, this is known as the readily releasable vesicle pool. So this is the readily releasable vesicle pool. And when, a, um, when an action potential comes along the axon and arrives at the axon terminal, these vesicles, these synaptic vesicles in the readily releasable vesicle pool will be the first to fuse with the membrane and have their contents released into this space here between the pre- and post-synaptic neuron, which is known as the synaptic cleft. Okay, right. So, we want to look at the mechanisms by which this synaptic vesicle is docked at the membrane, and also how, uh, when an action potential arrives in this axon terminal, it actually triggers this docked vesicle to uh, fuse with the plasma membrane and release its vesicle contents, its neurotransmitter, into the synaptic cleft. Okay, so let's begin with how a synaptic vesicle drawn in a larger picture here, is going to dock or bind to the plasma membrane. Okay, right. Uh, so, this is done through a protein-protein interaction. So there are proteins in the membrane of the vesicle which are going to bind to proteins in the plasma membrane of the uh, neuron here. Okay, and these proteins are what are known as snare proteins which is often written in capital letters like this. Now, SNARE stands for SNAP receptors. So the SNA comes from SNAP, and then the RE comes from receptor. 
okay? And SNAP, if you want to know, stands for Soluble NSF Attachment Proteins. I'll write that down here somewhere as well. Soluble NSF Attachment Protein. And now what we think is that Soluble NSF Attachment Protein isn't actually that important in the docking of the, uh, well, the binding of the snare proteins to one another. And uh, it's not important in the docking of vesicles to the membrane or uh, the actual fusion events. Instead, we think it's important in the recycling process of synaptic vesicles. Okay, and we'll discuss soluble NSF attachment protein more uh, later in this uh, playlist. Okay, so... Um, we, what are these proteins, then, that are actually in the membrane of the synaptic vesicle and the membrane of the cell? Uh, well, they can be divided into two types. They can be divided into V-snares, which are those that are associated with the vesicle, okay, so nothing difficult here, and they can be divided into the T-snares. The T-snares are those that are actually associated with the target membrane, so T here, stands for target snares, so they are on the target membrane. And in this case, the target membrane is viewed as being the plasma membrane. It's the membrane that you are hoping to fuse your vesicle with, so it's the target for the vesicle. Okay, now let's actually look at what these snare proteins that are in the vesicle and also in the plasma membrane are. So we'll begin with the one that's in the vesicle. And this is a protein known as synaptobrevin. Now, there are many different synaptobrevin proteins, and the one that is specifically in synaptic vesicles in uh, the axon terminal of neurons is synaptobrevin 2. So this is synaptobrevin 2. Okay? So synaptobrevin 2. There are also snare proteins in the plasma membrane, the T-snares, and there are two of these. So firstly, let's have this one here, which is syntaxin 1. Now, syntaxin 1 and synaptobrevin 2 have very similar structures. They have a membrane attachment portion that spans the membrane, and then they have this cytoplasmic portion, which is a long alpha helix. Okay, so this is syntaxin 1. And again, there are lots of different syntaxins. So uh, the one that's specifically involved in the docking of new synaptic vesicles to the plasma membrane is syntaxin 1. Okay, then the other T snare is a protein known as SNAP25, which I'll show here in turquoise. So SNAP25 is here in turquoise. And basically, SNAP25 has a membrane attachment portion over here, and then it has these two alpha helices which go into the cytoplasm then. Okay, so this is SNAP25. Okay, right. Now, what is going to happen basically is that these alpha helices here are going to intertwine around one another basically and they're going to form what is known as a core snare complex. So where should I write this? Okay, I'm just going to pick that thing off my finger. Um, so, um, core snare complex. So this here, all four alpha helices are going to wind around each other and form what's known as a core snare complex. And specifically, it's what's known as a trans-core snare complex. So this is a core snare complex, or even more fancily, trans-core snare complex. Now, the reason it's called a trans-core snare complex, okay, and let me underline this because it's getting a little bit crazy here, core tra uh, trans-core snare complex. The reason it's called a trans-core snare complex is because trans means across or on the other side, okay, and this refers to the fact that these you have snare proteins coming together in this core snare complex, which are on opposing membranes, basically. This synaptobrevin 2 is on a different membrane to syntaxin 1 and at SNAP25. That is why uh, they are called, this is known as a trans core snare complex. What's going to happen, basically, is uh, these Four alpha helices are going to wrap up and intertwine together and form this trans core snare complex. And this sort of wrapping up, they begin. Uh, basically, there's a theory that they 
begin, um, it's speculated that they begin wrapping up from the free ends here, and then it makes its way down, and that's what's known as the zipper mechanism, or the zipper hypothesis. So the zipper mechanism. Okay, right. Now, when this happens, initially, what happens is syntaxin 1 and SNAP25 are in the plasma membrane together. So the order that this core snare complex is formed in is that initially syntaxin 1 and SNAP25 intertwine with one another and form like a pre snare complex, if you like, and then the synaptic brevin 2 comes and joins the fun when the synaptic vesicle comes over, and it then joins this complex to make the full core uh, snare complex. Okay, so we'll call it there for this video and continue our discussion in the next video.